Hey, Coach, uh, just wondering your thoughts on Jalen Hurts and his dual threat ability and what a challenge that is for a defense. Yeah, we've got a ton of respect for Jalen Hurts. Um, you know, everywhere that Jalen's been, he's won and won games at, at, at high level. Um, got a really strong arm. He's tough as hell. Uh, we know he can push the ball down the field and certainly can extend plays, but he, he's got a live arm, and we got a, we got a hell of a challenge. One of the themes this week up here has been the idea that Nick Sirianni is a new head coach, you're a new head coach, and there's going to be an element of mystery in this game. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, there's always a little bit of an element of mystery on week one, even if you're an established staff. You know, people, you know, most staffs have been around. You know, you self-scout all off season. There may be some schemes you may add. And usually people, unless they're trying to get some kind of Instagram highlight in the preseason, they're usually saving that for week one. So, um, you know, that would be the same. Obviously, with Nick and that staff, I'm, I, you know, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of those guys. They're very familiar with, with me, at least personality-wise. Now, we're both in new spots, new personnel. Um, but I know this. I know this. Uh, Philly will be ready to go because Nick's a hell of a football coach, and they'll play fundamentally sound. And we have a work cut out for us. Arthur, you – you interviewed for the Eagles job, right? Correct. Okay. What I mean, having done that, I'm sure that you did all your homework and everything. And and, and basically, you know, in general terms, what, what kind of a team are the Eagles, or, or were you looking at? Well, no, I was just honored. Uh, you know, I was I was fortunate to go through the uh, hiring process last year. Um, really thankful for the opportunity the Eagles gave me to come down there and interview with Jeffrey Lurie and and that staff and Howie. Uh, but again, you know, I was fortunate to talk to other teams, uh, really fortunate Atlanta offered me a job. So we never got really that far down the road, but I, you know, I got the interview and like I said, we were coming off a playoff game. So I, you know, I didn't have a week to sit around and, and study everybody's roster, pretty familiar with them, but not to the level where I had a, you know, a 50 point, uh, 50 page PowerPoint. And, you know, I was getting ready to, to play a game against the Ravens, but I know this about Philly. It's a really well-built roster. I think you're, you know, we're going to face two of the better lines in the league. As you guys know better than me, pretty beat up last year. But when this group is rolling, which it will be Sunday, um, it's an impressive group. Well-built team. Hey, hey, Arthur, I was wondering if I could ask you, what are the advantages, um, you know, being a new coach and, and having an established quarterback like Matt Ryan? Like, how does he help you kind of, like, institute your game plan and what is he kind of meant for the offense as, as you guys enter? Yeah, it, it certainly, it helps. Uh, you know, it won't be his first rodeo going out there on Sunday. And so when you're installing uh, certain schemes and you're trying to tweak certain things, like he's got a, a wealth of knowledge that you, he can go back on. And those are conversations we have. He's just had a different, different level than most players because of all the, all the reps he's had in the NFL and he's had a ton of success. Um, but Matt, Matt's a very coachable player. I really enjoy working with him. Uh, you know, I know he's a local Philly guy, and he joked yesterday that nobody knew him out of Philly compared to Pitts. But I'd say he's got to be one of the better high school players looking back on it's come out of that area. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Arthur, just to follow up on Pitts, um, you know, he was the first non-quarterback taken in the draft. That You know, you had your pick of quarterbacks, but you decided to go with Kyle. Uh, why was that decision made, and then how has he looked so far this summer? Well, a lot of things that factored in the decision. Um, again, Matt's still playing at a high level, and there, there were some really good quarterbacks in the draft, um, and we, we chose to go with what we thought at the fourth pick, right? You're sitting there, and every year is different. Just because you're sitting at number four uh, wouldn't necessarily mean you're going to take the first quarterback, um, and that's no knock to anybody who's ever drafted behind us because there's going to be guys that are going to play. History shows you every year that is, but a lot of different philosophies. We feel like they're Matt Ryan's still playing a high level, and we felt like we improved our football team when we drafted Kyle Pitts. And, you know, Matt's, unless he finds the fountain of youth, uh, which may or may not be, have been found, you know, he's not going to play until he's 50. So at some point, we do have to make a transition to, to another quarterback, but we feel like Kyle would be great as he as he'll develop and hopefully come along. And, and when we make that transition, we've got a pretty stable team. Not dissimilar when, when Matt got here. You know, he had Roddy White. He had Tom McClure as a veteran sitter. And then, you know, they went and got Tony Gonzalez the next year, and that really helped 
and that's growth as well. Uh, I know, um, you know, obviously Kyle gets a lot of the, the acclaim, but you have a rookie starting uh, on the offensive line in Jalen Mayfield uh, against a pretty veteran Eagles defensive line. How's Jalen Mayfield done? And, and um, you know, what are some challenges that your offensive line faces uh, against this Eagles D line? Well, Jalen, he's coming along as a rookie. We played him quite a bit in the in the preseason. You know, we started camp. We had, we were a little short at, at tackle, and you know, he got some reps there. And then we worked him back inside. And you know, we had a freak injury last week, and that's unfortunately that's life in the NFL. Uh, you know, he'll be ready to go. He's a rookie. You know, they're gonna there's gonna be things. They're gonna be new for him out there. And there's a challenge every week. Obviously, we got a work cut out for us with the Eagles defensive line. But as you guys know, you guys cover this game a long time. I mean, you, you just pick a matchup every week. So that's the National Football League. Obviously, that's the difference in the preseason. When you get it there, there there's going to be somebody every week up front that we we got to try to take care of. Um, I know, obviously, you, you weren't here when – or you weren't in Atlanta when, when Julio Jones was there. But, um, you know, how much – do you get a sense, like, of, of – his absence and what that might mean for you guys. I mean, I know obviously Ridley is an excellent receiver and you guys have Kyle Pitts, but was there kind of like uh, some kind of carryover, I guess, from when, when Julio was here among the players who were back? Okay. You know, every year in the NFL, your, your teams are going to change. Uh, like I said, that's, that's life in the NFL. I, you know, I don't, uh, you know, maybe that's a better question for people who are here. I mean, like I said, the 2022 Falcons will feel different with free agency in the NFL, the way the salary cap structured. There's going to be change, and that, that's life. And as long as you're going, I'm not, I'm not a real nostalgic person. I, I only focus on, on what's ahead of us, who's here in the present. Um, you know, like, like I said, I sure. Would, would you love to have Mike Vick active for this week? Yeah. You know, I'd love. You know, you go back and maybe Deion Sanders. Great, but like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a new year, new team. So it is what it is. Uh, but that's going to be every year. You're dealing with it. Uh, you know, nothing stays the same. You never truly just run it back with the exact same team. Hey, Arthur, just ask you about Jonathan Gannon. You two coached in Tennessee together. You had coached against uh, the Colts' uh, defense twice a year. I know he was the DB coach. But do you expect to see some similar elements from him, uh, you know, the way he'll coach his defense on Sunday? Yeah, John's, John's a good friend of mine. We haven't coached together in eight years. We did share an office for two years, so it's kind of like living with somebody in a dorm uh, when you're coaching. So I feel like I know John really well. Um, good friend of mine. But we haven't coached together in eight years. So obviously our, both of us, as you grow as a coach, like he was in the division. Uh, you know, I think Matt Eberflus is one of the better defensive coaches in the league. John's going to have his own stamp. And John was also with Mike Zimmer. And so John's his own guy. I know they'll be really sound in the secondary. They'll be they'll be hunting down the football. He'll have them ready to go. Um, you know, be happy as hell for John, except when we play. Hey, if I could also ask um, about a local guy for us, uh, Jerron Harmon, uh, veteran safety. He's been, uh, you know, he's obviously won Super Bowls with the Patriots and been in the league for a long time. How much does he mean to like the back end of your defense, so, like you know, with his leadership and everything? Yeah, Theron is, is the ultimate pro, and, and I know that's kind of subjective and broad, but that, but I mean that that's that a high compliment. Uh, you know, he's he's been through some really big games. He's a very smart player. Um, you know, he's a natural leader. There's nothing fake around about Theron Harmon, and uh, we're happy he's here. And you know, he's had a, a big impact here uh, in a short time. Really, really, uh, you know, on and off the field. Cool. Hey, Arthur. I mean. Uh, this is not really a football question, but I, I always wondered, always wondered what it was like growing up with your pop as the founder of FedEx. What, what is that like? Do you get kidded about it? And uh, how, what has that been like? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's simple. So I, like, I, I didn't know any different. He's my dad, you know, and he's, had, he's a parent. And I have a fortune to have two really good parents. And um, sure, when you're, you're little, you don't know anything different because it's just the world you live in. Uh, you know, very fortunate. There's a lot of good lessons. I, you know, if you ever knew, you have to talk to my dad. Uh, probably one of the humble people you ever meet. He instilled that in my brothers. We never thought that we 
we hit the triple. You know, I think that's it's, it's bad when people's, uh, you know, your parents have success and all of a sudden you think you've accomplished something. He certainly, uh, we never felt that. Many of my brothers and sisters, you know, he's a, he's a Marine at heart, uh, served two tours in Vietnam. But, you know, as a kid, it, you know, it was ironic. Um, got, got to meet a lot of really cool people, got to go to a lot of uh, really nice events. Uh, I guess when I got to about second, third grade, you know, people started saying stuff. My dad said, your dad was it. And I, I just knew him as my dad. But, uh, you know, uh, he, he means so much to me. Uh, it's nice. You know, I talk to him multiple times a week when I'm driving home, talk about life. He doesn't try to give me a, a football advice. We talk about leadership and management. I don't try to give him logistic advice. I haven't tried to change any of the flights from Charles de Gaulle to Dubai or anything like that for him. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, very fortunate to have him as a father.